the rank from lead on up. For lead on, you need the first 16. For Sandan, you need the first 34. For Yandan, fourth on and above, you should know the whole thing, even though it's not recommended or required for you to demonstrate it, but you need to be able to do it. We've had several people that have asked permission to demonstrate the whole thing at test, and have used been for Sandan to demonstrate the whole thing and being granted that privilege. Um, along with knowing the uh, first 14 of Yonkata. So it comes up from Sandan and above, you need to start learning extra stuff on top of this. This kata is unique in that it's really, I think it's the most exciting kata out there. It's a very fun kata. It also uh, teaches you principles that you learned as a white belt. It teaches you principles and things that you learned coming up through the rank. Because the techniques that you're going to be seeing in this kata aren't indifferent from the 17 that you already know. You know the release motions, you know the 17, they're in this kata. So it's not that you're learning advanced stuff. You're not learning new stuff. You're just learning a proper, different, better application of old stuff. Um, it teaches a lot about distance. You're going to start this kata with both people on your knees, just barely, nose to nose practical, nose to nose, belly to belly. And then Uke will stand up. So now you've got Tori sitting down and Uke standing. After that, Tori stands up. And then you get a knife. Then you get a stick. Then you get a sword. Then you get double swords. And, and so your distances that start really close now start expanding and expanding. But you'll see several techniques in this copy that repeat themselves. You'll see one during the knife. Next thing you know, you'll see it during an empty hand later on or vice versa. You'll see several copies, several techniques that repeat throughout <coughs> this thing. One with and one without a weapon. Or a different weapon. Um, so it's a fun copy. It's a dynamic content. Make sure when you're doing this, don't try to understand what's going on. Don't try to read a lot into it. Just do the content. Do the techniques. Do them the best you know how. Maintain the principles that you've learned. Distance, posture, balance, breaking, movement, timing. You maintain all those, all of a sudden the content will speak your language. It's going to say, oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. And your eyes will open up and you'll start smiling and having a good time with this content. Once you do this content, once you start doing this content, and you're demonstrating it for whatever purposes, try to keep an open mind, meaning actually a clear mind, a blank mind. Don't think about the next technique. If you think about it, you'll get confused. Try to just do the techniques, step <coughs> one all the way through, boom, 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 nonstop, keeping a clear, sober, conscious, unconscious, actually, mushin, no mind, presence, and you'll be just fine. Right. Uh, so on that note, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Randy to come up. We're not going to worry about the formalities of this kata. The formalities part with the bowing and the weapons and sticks, stuff like that, that's easy to learn. You can learn it in one night and get it over with. So I'm going to save that for the last thing that we do. I'm going to ask Randy to come up here. What I'm going to do is demonstrate just the first eight techniques at this time. Okay? Just the first eight, because we're not going to get that far for a while yet. So I'm going to do just the first eight this time. And if you need to move like someplace, it's fine, because there's a couple of techniques where Randy's going to be going in direction.
God, okay. I made it all ready to start. Okay, what I need you to do is, first of all, is pair yourself up kind of sort of with a partner who's more or less kind of sort of. Okay, first thing, kneeling down. I hate to talk to my back to the camera. I hate having to talk to y'all. I'll try to. We can, we can actually move it. Like, I'm talking to. Okay. When you're doing this kata, after you've done the balance, the first thing is posture. Always remember your posture. When you go to a kneeling position, now again, this distance is arbitrary. This distance depends on the size and shape and whatnot of the people that are here. So if you've got tall people and a short person, a zucantori, well, you might want to be apart just a little bit. Equal height and weight, you might want, you, you want to be just <coughs> basically toe-to-toe, nose-to-nose. -to -nose. If you're big and fat like me and Randy, well, we're going to be too far away, but our belly is going to be bumping, okay? So you, ha you have, this is a distance, an arbitrary distance that's going to have to be decided by you at the time and worked out. <clears throat> but the most important thing is when you go down, don't get down here, avoid this. I'm, I'm just saving his knees right now, but avoid doing this. Watch my body. Funk. Okay? You have to avoid that, first of all. The second thing you have to avoid you want, you want to come down this way, here, so that when I kneel down, my knee is going to come right by my right heel. See it? My next motion is to avoid doing this to get this other knee out. I'm poking again. When I come to here, I keep my posture, I just slide it back. The next motion that you must avoid is doing this to sit down. Those of you learning EI, your sword doesn't quit, quite latch into your scabbard, and you do this, it goes right on the floor. When you come to here, get your posture, flatten your toes, and you come straight. Okay? That's the first thing to work on, so I'm not going to harp too much on that right now, but no, that's what you need to be doing. The next thing you're going to be hearing me harp on all the time is on this kata, uke and tori are a dynamic team. Okay? It's not me blasting him and he's just up there getting beat on. We're a team. Therefore, anything we do has to be done together all the time. So when I go to move, he goes to move. Now, we, at this point, notice both our toes are curled. I can't see his, he can't see mine, but we have to know and go down together. Now, this time we're a little bit too far apart, but, but you see how, how that has to happen? It's not, I'm moving, then he's moving, because your judges are going to see this. Can you, hold, can you keep going up and down? If you screw it up, this is what your board of examiners sees. Now, seriously, we've sat on boards, you've seen that, haven't you? And you're like going, oh great, this is going to be good. You can tell from the very beginning of your presentation what the rest of the cot is going to look like. Versus this, I've got to help Randy up here, he's safe as knees here. Versus seeing this. Now, for too far apart, for whatever reason, he can adjust the posture. All he does is he puts his hands down to the side, which tells me there's no threat. He scooches forward. Then when he likes to distance, he comes back up. He adjusts, not me. He's trying to hit me. I'm just sitting here minding my business. He has to be the one to say, I'm too far apart. Now we're ready to start. Okay? Questions on that? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Permissible to use the fists. Only as a learning tool. During the cocktail for your actual demonstration? No. But if you're learning it to see that distance, that's fine. To scooch forward? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand the comment about the fist. Distance wise, there's two different things. Randy put his hands down like this and scooch forward. She's asking, can I put my fist down and oh, scooch forward like this? Okay. That's fine. The other thing is for a learning tool for discovering distance, you'll see people, average distance is two fist lengths apart. So that's average, not exact. So he'll put his fist down to his knees. I put my fist down here like this. 
and the average distance is two fists apart. Okay. And a lot of people will start measuring distances that way first. Oh, what are fists? Yeah, okay. But again, we're too close for that distance. For our size, we're too close. So it's going to be a little bit further. <coughs> again. Now he's at about the right distance. So this is a learning tool for seeing distance, but it ultimately, and putting your fist down on the side, yeah, that's no problem. Let's, you know, do this, do this, whatever. As long as Uke knows that I can't do this to put my hands down first to, to close distance. Uke has to be coming here, put his hands down here to the side where there's no threat, and then can scooch forward, and then can come up and put his hands back up. That way he's not threatening Tori in any way. Okay? Now we get to the meat of the matter. That stuff you'll learn over and over again as the cockpit goes on, <laughs> okay? Um, be gentle on your knees. If, if your knees need to be stretched out at any time, then go ahead and stand up, stretch them out, do whatever. You'll also find your toes start to cramp if you're not used to this cockpit at any time. Okay? Now the meat of the cockpit. First technique is Oshi Tai Oshi. So you don't want to happen to know the name of it. There's a couple of other names in here, okay? Oshi Taoshi is Oshi Taoshi just like out of the 17. The way I like to teach it is that Tori starts or thinks about, anticipates an attack. There's three different versions of that. I don't know the three Japanese terms. One is Sen no Sen, the other is Sen Sen no Sen, and I forget what the third one is. But one is I anticipate an attack by Uke and, and defend. The other one is I, my flinching causes Uke to attack and I defend. And the third one is, I just sense, I'm at ESP, and I know he's thinking about an attack, and I defend. And I forget what the third Japanese... Sen Sen no Sen. Sen Sen no Sen. Thank you. There's three different things. There's a big old long discussion on Tumiki Yellow about that a while back. I'm not getting involved in that discussion either. The way I learned it is the, the version of where I anticipate a technique, I feel a technique, I sense a technique on his part, and I start to move. And as I start to move, he now starts his actual attack, which actually becomes a defense. He flinches, he blinks, he inhales hard, he looks cross-eyed at me, something which tells me he's fixing to attack me. I go to defend, I go to strike him, and he defends me. Okay? That's the way I learned this contest, that's the way I teach it. Now there are different anticipation, anticipatory principles is, this is the way I'm showing it. Boom. You see my start to flinch? Okay. I started to move, he defended. I just went like this. I just flicked my hand and he started to attack me. That's when I get there before he does. Boom. My Kazushi is not straight up the middle, it's slightly over the shoulder. See him leaning to that corner? Now, here's where most people lose it. I have to hit Oshitoshi from here. I have to open up this right leg. I can't do it by doing this and sitting down. If now he falls on top of me and I'm holding him up. I have to take this hand here and I just open this leg this way. Now I've got room for my leg to knee walk through. As I do that, this hand comes down. Just this. Not the whole arm. Not doing all this mess. I'm just here. From the off balance to that. Now I knee walk through and do Oshi Toshi. Let this hand slide to your thigh and then slide down your knee. What I'm trying to get at this point is his arm forward of 90 degrees as much as possible. Okay? At that point, I let his arm slide down my knee, put my other knee in his armpit here, and here comes the fun part because you have to widen your base without sitting on your heels. If I sit on my heels, my center of gravity now went behind his elbow. In order to apply the technique, I have to rock forward on it, which causes me to lean forward. What I have to do is throw my butt <coughs> underneath here, widen my base, and just barely put pressure on that elbow. And if you see, my toes are just barely curled. If I lose one toe or the other at this point, I'm falling forward, because my, my left toe is losing it right now, and I'm leaning forward just as it goes clink, and there I go. Okay? From here, some people like to knee walk backwards, which is fine. I can't do that too well. It just puts a strain on the knee. So I give him the arm back that he's tapped, just till it gets back to control. I come up, let him come up. Now, at this point, you see people, that's where your knee walk backwards. You can if you want to. 
I understand knee problems. I'm not going to say that you have to do it. What I'm going to say is you do have to do what that can cost you though. Most Joseki aren't going to get too upset about them. Notice we didn't say anything one way or the other when people were doing it earlier. That's fine. If you want to do it backwards, that's great. And we're back to our starting spot. Pretty much. We missed it by two inches. Okay? We'll do the technique. Angle? Which way do you want my back? Uh, my back Toward this these guys, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, don't like that. Yeah, yeah, anytime you can't see, you know, wave at me, different directions, different angles. Any questions? Okay, thanks. So. Try that. One thing to be aware of when you're doing your first initial kazushi on this, don't pick up too high. You can't let this happen. When you do that, he'll hit you upside the head or in the ribs or something with that other hand by picking him up. What you have to be trying to do is kazushi him just over that corner. Boom. Not up here, but that corner. Now, this hand, if he decides to move it, it's going to throw him backwards. <laughs> okay? And this hand is also down here to keep him from falling over. He's like going, oh, crap. That's okay? Don't let your children watch the stage. Mr. Williams, curse. Okay? You ready for the next technique, or do you have any, any other questions on this one? Always curl the toes, by the way. Point of fact, in this kata, all the way through this kata, you're going to hear me screaming at you, curl your toes, curl your toes, curl your toes. Curling your toes is very important. I'll let you play with this here in a second. You'll feel it. I want you to sit here like this, and you're all stretched out in the space over here, and you're like this. Even when your toe curled over here, by the way, this is your posture for trying to get that arm bar. Not like this. Okay? Here. And as soon as, y'all let to play with this, as soon as you let one toe or both toes go flat, two things are going to happen. You're either going to do this, clump, but you're not going to get your arm bar. Or if you're out here like this, and you duck your head, you're going to fall forward just from ducking your head. You've got to have your toes curled. Every technique on here. As soon as we're up here minding our own business, and here comes the technique. We're going to go real slow for this entry. And here we go. Watch. Both of those, both of those, come up, curl the toes. He's got them curls to keep me from pushing him over, or at least an attempt to. Most of the time I'm going to have a chance to. Well, you should. Try your best to. Okay? That's probably my fault. Not letting him get there in time. Next technique. I have to explain this. The next technique is he just says, I'm just going to take Mr. Williams and just punch him. It's just that he's going to try to smack me right upside the head. Now, this is always a hard one for Uke's because he's like, oh, I don't want to hurt my Tories, my bud. We're going out beer drinking afterwards, okay? Remember, this is kata. Nothing personal in kata. If you hit him, oh, well, buy him a beer and when you're done. But it's his fault if you hit him. And the reason I say that is, let's go Kate Walker's go. The reason I say that is, we're here like this. He's going to assume that I'm not going to move. He's going to take his hands, bring it straight up over the head, and then he's going to hit me in my temple with his fist. But he doesn't know that I'm going to come up. If he hits me anywhere, it's going to be with his forearm on my shoulder. If all I do is just pop up in the air. 
if I don't do anything but sit up real quick. And his momentum of this strong swing is just going to curl him and bring him off to that corner. Momentum alone will do that if he's really committed to try to hit you. Which is the fun part. So Uke has to want to try to hit Tori. Now, for the sake of this kata and you're learning it, I know it's not going to happen. I was Uke for Mr. Geist learning this kata, and I told him, just go ahead and kill me now because there's no way I'm going to be able to tr just haul off and hit you. It's not going to happen. So I just had to pretend it and make the best humongo break fall I can you know, do all this fancy stuff and had to fake it basically like I was trying to hit him. But the, I know in my mind it was not happening. All I'm going to do is Tori, is to, my hands are here in this nice natural posture. As he starts to come up, I also come up and I bring my hand straight up the middle and do that. And try to just block his hand, his eyes, his face, whatever from here. That's all I'm doing, just straight up the middle. I'm not doing any funny stuff. I'm not trying to bend my arm. I'm not trying to push it. I'm not trying to do anything to him. I'm not trying to do a technique. All I'm doing is coming up and raising my hand to that posture right there, right in front of the eyes, right in front of his eyes, right there. Not up here, not down here, right in front of his eyes, which in our case happens to be proper level for me. Remember this motion? I'm just coming straight up the middle. <coughs> with an inhale. If you want to come up, you have to be inhaling to move. If you're exhaling or holding your breath, you're not going to be able to pop up. It has to be an inhale. This hand immediately goes to its center posture. Now, he will lay there until I drop my position. Now he can come back to his regular spot for the next technique. Reverse. This one. This one. Or straight on. That's good right there. making this motion, it is not the hand throws the body forward. I'm not coming here and going, okay? That will throw you forward every time. What I'm doing is the body starts the hand moving. The body picks up the hand. So like when you walk normally, your body throws your arms. It's the same thing. I'm here, I go. Otherwise, I'm here going, because this momentum threw me forward. Whereas the body coming up, the hand is now coming up and not going out. Okay? Thank you. Carry on. Okay, the next one is put the gaishin. This is a rough one to do. Uh, sort of complicated. There's lots of little steps involved in doing this. But I want to clarify one thing for the sake of the tape. When y'all are watching this tape, don't keep changing positions the way we're going back and forth when you see us on the tape. We're starting in this posture for clarification of the tape. Normally you would see us all the time down the line, with very few exceptions, Tori to this side. So if this camera is Joseki, Tori is normally going to be over here. Okay? For the sake of y'all watching this tape, that's where you're supposed to be. If you're looking at this as a judge. We're doing it this way for the sake of clarification so, so the tape can see what's going on. Here's the fun part. And don't, be, don't feel bad if you can't do this the way I do it. We had a class one evening, I forget how long ago it was, where there's about this many people. I think Richard was there, several others were here. And we had people looking at this technique from four angles and the balcony. I did it right under the balcony to see what was I doing that nobody else was doing. 
and we couldn't quite figure out because everybody walked through the steps and it still didn't happen the way I did it. It might not line, sir. It's true. Absolutely true. Having the slightest idea what I do different from what I tell anybody else to do. I tell you to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. I do it step one, step two, step three, talk my way through it completely. And it still doesn't turn out with everybody the way I do it. So what you're going to be doing and seeing on this tape is probably not what you're going to be able to do, but it should be at least close to it. Kotagayushi. The most important thing about this technique is you have to have a committed uke. I'm going to show it to you once, regular speed, and then we'll stop and come back and I'll talk through it. Just like there. <laughs> Two things have to happen. Relax, please, man. Again, I have to be coming up with my body as he goes to strike and turning, but I have to do it at the same time. It's not a come up and turn. I have to be come up and turn. As I'm rising, I'm twisting. So that by the time I get to this posture, I need to be here. <laughs> so it'll look like this. Okay? I can see all these confused looks already. I can see you at home going, what the hell did he just do? Okay? The next motion is, is I have to be catching his hand as I'm doing this. His hand opens up. This motion is not a grab or anything else. You'll see it with his arm in just a minute. I'm just draping, following through, and opening up completely. This hand has to be shoulder level all the way out of the way. There's a reason for it. I'll tell you later. He recoils backwards. And as I recoil, you notice what I did? I just opened my knees. Look. So as I'm coming up from this posture, I'm here, my weight shifts, I turn, my foot stays here, and it goes, boom. I just pivot on this knee. Nothing has really changed as far as the dynamic position. This looks like it has. So that when I come back, I pivot on this knee, boom, and I'm right back where I started from. The magic part about this is now I do the exact same motion to the other half of the body. So what you saw over here happens over here. If I take this hand away for a minute, you'll see. All of a sudden it makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> For those of you who just did this contest recently, all of a sudden it's starting to make sense now. What you do in one half of the body, you've got to do on the other half. At this point is when I hit him with, with Kota Gaishi. This is where you need your committed uke. He has to come up on a knee, he'll take a fall, and while he's in the air and taking that fall, you don't sit down, you knee walk through. <clears throat> Then you do the other half of this motion over here, again, which turns him over, you slide your foot, bring it back up. Now I'll do it with the okay, attached. I'm going to try to go slow. It's hard for Randy to do to go slow, but I'm going to try to go slow. He strikes. I come up and turn with a drape. See, I'm not grabbing. Just hooking. Get that arm out of there if he wants. He pulls back. Notice his position. He had to put the hand down to catch himself. He's still on both knees. <coughs> he pulls back. Raises that knee right here. He does a break fall from here. He doesn't just cheese out. He actually stands up 
and goes over. Boom. At this point is when I knee walk back down, boom, and open, which turns him over. I think I forgot to show you the knee walk when I was doing it with that by myself. Turn him over, pull up, strike. You may or may not end up this close, it depends. Going slow, all things are subject to get screwed up. That's a general rule of time. Done slow, anything can and will get screwed up. Do we need to go through a different angle or was that okay, sir? This one? You want me facing or away from camp piece, sir? Uh, yeah, try try with Brandy where he about where he is now. Okay. Okay. On that. Common errors. Let's go like this way for common errors. Common errors. Ready? Pulling the arm into you. Instead of keeping it out here. Like to pull it up. On the return, pulling your hands in. Or, on the return, picking the hand up and then pushing down. This is four biggies that happen all the time in this copter that'll screw you up. You watch my hands, don't take the false time. Watch my hands from the time of the strike as to where they go. Right here. This hand's in the center. Ignore this one for just a minute. It's in the center. Right there. They're both in the center. They're both at arm's length away. Both in the center. See it? They didn't go up, down, in, out, or around. Questions on that? This is a difficult one to do to get done right. You have to have a dynamic uke who's willing to get to this part right here and to stand up and take a big fall over there. If you have an uke who cheeses out of it, they get to here and just collapses their knee and rolls it's not going to end up the same posture. It's not going to work. Okay? Questions on that? By the way, in your green book, for those of you who have a green book, this kata is written out at least three different ways. It's got the long detailed version, it's got the Reader's Digest condensed version, and it's got just the names with a bunch of blank spaces in there for you to write your own notes in that green book that you got a long time ago. Remember the green book? <laughs> dust the dust off of it, start taking notes, because y'all are going to need it. Okay? Let's go. We can do standing up. We'll try standing up. We'll try the standing up and see what happens. Uh, when you're ukeing for this, your target needs to be, there's more DNA in there. Your target needs to be right here at your xiphoid sternum area, right in here. Because when we're actually kneeling down, he's going to be coming up and going straight out. Boom! He's not trying to hit me in the face. He's not trying to hit me in right above the belt, my belt and mill, my, my biggest target I can give him. He's trying to hit me in a weak spot right here, which is just below the xiphoid. That big nerve branch that goes through there. And if you ever fall on a bicycle when you were little kids, you wiped out and you landed really hard, and all of a sudden you couldn't breathe for about 30 seconds, and you just know you're going to die. Everybody had that happen yet? I know it's done me a couple of times. And you go, and nothing, you can't scream because you can't breathe, nothing's happening. I don't know what happened. Vegas, Vegas nerve or something gets hit. I don't know if this is... It just doesn't happen. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to hit that nice little weak spot, boom, right at the bottom of your sternum. And to put you in the spasm so you can't breathe and move or do anything. You're worried about you're going to die. Can't even call mama, mama. You can't breathe. Okay? So that's what he's trying to hit you with. And he has to be committed to want to hit me. If you notice, when we did a regular speed, He's again assuming that I'm not going to move. 
the soil first. He's assuming that I'm going to come here and go boom, and he's trying to just blast me into oblivion next week. Okay? Maybe even a, a mid sternum type of punch. Bam, right in there. What he's not counting on is me not being here. He's not trying to hit me in the face. Okay? If he does that, I'll do something different to him. Okay? Because he's got his arm higher than where it needs to be. That's what the fun part about this content is. When Uke start going higher than here, well, this is one technique. <coughs> Guess what? This is another. What's the difference? Four or five inches. This is something different. I'm not going to try to do Kodagashi from the air. If he's coming at my face, guess where I'm going? I'm going back to number one. Okay? So he needs to try to commit to strike to hit me. He can't be giving me love taps. He has to want to hit me. And he has to commit to get that arm back once I take it. Because I'm not going to hang out there in space and wait for any length of time on it. Because I'm going to be feeding it to him if he doesn't do anything. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go up this way. Yeah, just do the front part. First of all, he's going to try to strike. I need to be out of the way. Now, I'm not just going to hang here and wait for him to go la di da di da I'm in a weird posture. It's going to be hard for me to move anywhere else down this angle. I just got off lines. all I did. I'm going to take his arm and rip it off his shoulders which causes him to want to come up. I'm not going to hang around. This is a different set of techniques slightly. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to wait for him to pull back. He's going to pull back, but I'm not going to sit here and wait all day for it and try to do other manipulating funny things. He's going to hang there, screw it. But I recoil on him. The reason I can't do funny things is I'm in a weird posture. Does that make sense? In order for me to do something else, I'm going to have to move myself into a weird position from here. I've already done this, well, this hand is gone. What am I going to do? I only have one hand. I'm locked up over here. I can't get an arm bar from here without moving my hand back in and doing all these other adjustments, which sets him now. He just leans on me, and I'm on my ass over here. And he's on top of me. We're on the ground. I can't lollygag around, boom, and wait for him to react. I give it a half a second, two heartbeats maybe, and then, boom, fire into it. And if he doesn't recoil and react, what ends up happening, see him, is I take his arm and just dislocate his shoulder. Oh, happy day for all of you who like pain. That's why he's trying to get this arm back, because he feels me. He's trying to move to a good posture, and he feels me pushing on him. That's what accelerates the activity. I did something slightly weird, Fred, don't? No, no. <laughs> okay? Yeah. You saw something stupid. Those of you who saw the tape, just ignore what you saw me do with my hands this in, okay? That's for talkie demonstration purposes. It's not for the content purposes. If you didn't see it, I'm not going to tell you what I did. Okay? So, Uke has to commit to one strike. Now, for y'all learning this, please don't do that. You're learning this, get to here, okays, come up, Tories react, go with them. That's how you learn your sensitivity and your timing and your movement and your flowing and goodies like that. But you have to want to commit to strike, you have to want to commit to pull back, you have to want to commit to put that hand up there, that leg up there that's giving you that support that you think you're going to stand up on, which sends UK out. To take a nice clean break for Everybody remember the definition of kata? It's the demonstration of principles, not the demonstration of technique. So far, you've seen Agamayate. I think that's the name of it. The number two, uh, you know, just walking through and doing this. You've seen, now you've seen Kota Gaishi. You've seen Oshi Taoshi. Green belt, green belt stuff, brown belt stuff. <laughs> Guess what? Later on, when we deal with weapons, we're going to do an advanced technique when we got the sticks. We're going to do left sided Shomenate. Very advanced stuff here. Ask Doug Williams when he was here. Very advanced. Yeah, Gaku Gamiate happens in this thing. All the stuff that you learned out of the 17, you're seeing in this content. It's not advanced stuff. Mayotoshi, yeah, they all have it. 
I have my teleprompter over here doing many things in Okay? So, get up and try that then. Take your time, go slow. Thank you. He knows about it yet either, so he's just telling us there's a party. We don't know that there really is one. He's right. just saying that there is. I don't know. I don't have an invited to Oh, really? <laughs> okay. One thing you're going to find about this kata is as the techniques advance, <coughs> they're also done in series. I don't know if you figured that out. One, two, three, and four, Uke and Tori both kneeling. Five, six, seven, and eight, Tori, Uke gets to stand up. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, they both get to stand up as you're going along. What ends up happening is, is they end up going in each series from simple to complicated. Okay? From simple to complicated in each set. Not the whole entire cock that starts off really simple and it gets complicated, 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 but in each series of sections, or whatever you want to call it, each section of the way becomes simple, which is the fundamental movement of that set and then it gets complicated from there, which just means more things are built into it. So like you're noticing on these things, you come up. What's the initial thing? Is to come up and to rise. Well, next thing we're doing at Kodagashi, we're coming and rising, but this time we're turning. Well, now we're adding hands, posture. Now we're getting distance. Now we're going to do something different. We're going to do something different. <laughs> now we're going to do the fourth one of this series. The fourth one involves, okay, he's, he's, I anticipated his strike. And I took him to an arm bar. Uh, next thing is, is this time I didn't anticipate it. So he says he tries to hit me upside the head. Bam! And I just flash my hand. This time he punches at me from a belly strike. Now I've gotten offside. I'm turning. I'm going two different directions and knee walking. Now he says, well, the strikes didn't work. The strikes didn't work. The strikes didn't work. Well, this time I'm just going to stand up and pick his ass up off the floor. That's what the next one is, double wrist grab. Which reminds me, I want to show the Oshitoshi. I want to back up to Oshitoshi for the sake of the tape and show something I need before the <coughs> volunteer to well, Richard, I'm going to use Richard. I need you to get Okay? You get to stand up and let Richard kneel down for now. Okay? I'm going to show Oshitoshi two different ways. Okay? The first one is going to be kneeling. The second one is going to be standing. Okay? So you get to kneel down. Okay? And, uh... Where's the best way for this camera here, I think? Yeah, you can be right behind it. Okay? I think we can see both techniques from here now, okay? <coughs> Here's the first technique. We're here. We're going to stage so I need you to hold your posture, okay? You see that drill, okay? Come up. Boom. I just hold that posture. We're here. You say, Oshitayoshi is Oshitayoshi. Isn't that deep? Okay? <laughs> Kotegaishi is Kotegaishi. Don't go away. You'll bet, yeah? <coughs> You're not going to see this the way you see it in the 17. You see it the way it's done, Yoshiba style. Kotegaishi is Kotegaishi. Do the follow up. Let's see. Okay. 
Did I get my point across? Thank you, gentlemen. Go, Matt, go. <laughs> you see what's happening in these techniques? Just because you're kneeling down and doing something, oh, this is an advanced cockpit. No. Oshi Taoshi is Oshi Taoshi. Kota Gaishi is Kota Gaishi. Nothing changes. Maybe a step here, or maybe a slight little move here. Later on, you're going to hit. Remember, we had the problem with Gaku Gamayate during, the, during the, stick, yeah. the stick? And I think with Doug, we had the same problems. He says, How come I can do this by myself, but when I put a stick on the end of it, it becomes something different? And I had to show him, It's not. <laughs> okay? It's Gaku Gamayate is Gaku Gamayate. The weapons become an extension of the arm. With that in mind, we're now going to do. What is it? Sumio, it's a version of Sumio Toshi, I think. Straight on, facing the camera? I'm going to back up just a bit. Oh, okay, sorry. How we go? Okay, you want me facing or sideways? I'm about like that. Same way? Okay. Same way? Okay. This time, like I said, the punches didn't work. The strike to the face, you tried to do showman, that didn't work. Strike to the head, that didn't work. Strike to the belly, that didn't work. So now he's just going to say, screw it, I'm going to pick him up. So he leans on me, but not very hard. There's a different content where he leans on you really hard. I'm not going to explain that technique now. And he picks me up. <laughs> Try to get me to do this. Or to fall over, do something stupid, maybe even just stand up. Who knows? He's just trying to get me off of this ground because I kicked his ass from, from a sitting position each time, so he's going to try to stand me up. Okay? doesn't matter what your mentality or what he's trying to do. He's trying to get me off my ass somehow or another. Get my hands where he's got them. Boom. I can't do anything with my hands now. Before he tried striking, now he's got them. Boom. Okay? So what kind of mentality you want to put in there, what he's trying to do is unimportant. He's trying to pick me up. That's all you got to remember. Because the other three didn't work. As he's picking me up, He's, I'm, my hands are going to come, here, let me show regular speed first. I think that'll work best. Let me just show you the technique once. Why do you look confused for a second? All I'm doing is as he picks, Catch for the, the catch phrase for the new millennium. All you have to do is, as he's picking me up, he's trying to stand up. I let him have my arms for just a minute. The instant he grabs my hands, I now, boom, do this. First of all, just pick my fingers up. I don't rotate or turn. I just pick him up. Okay. Boom. Now he picks me up, and I let him start to pick up. And then as he picks up, I don't let him pick my arms up all the way, and then my body follow. Remember, I can't do that, because I will just start to fall, which is what he wants me to do. Remember that basic rule? Once the hands start going, by him picking them up, I now put my center behind it and pick up with my center. I don't try to force him with my hands. So as he's here, he picks up, boom. Now, here's where most people lose it. Look where my hands are. Can you see in that camera? They're underneath with this hand in. It's underneath, and it's almost right over my head. So I'm trying to get it is over my head. I'm not trying to get them out here. I'm not trying to stop out here. I'm <coughs> trying to get them right up over my head. Now look at that dust in his body. Where's his weak spot? Perpendicular to the line of his feet. Remember all this fundamental stuff you learned as a white belt? Perpendicular to the line of the feet is the weakest place you can be with my hands underneath his wrist for support. I'm not out here like that. I have no support. He'll fall on me and collapse my hands and, and trap me. I'm underneath him. Once I reach this part here, I let this hand, my left hand, collapse out just a hair. Just a hair. Yeet, move. Now look what that did to his body. It twisted everything. He was weak to begin with, and now I just flush the toilet on him. And as he recovers, I rotate out, leaving this hand over here, I rotate out, pushing with this hand. See, this hand is still protecting me. This hand up here is still protecting me. He get all the way out, and then this hand starts to push. 
And then it catches at me and helps him over. Let's go this way. corner for just a minute. I've opened out. He recoils, recovers, push, 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 and around. You may or may not catch the inside of his knees. What you're trying to do is catch it. As he's over this part over here, I'm going to ignore this hand for just a minute so we can see. As he's at this point right here, what I'm trying to do is to catch his knee to keep him from falling and putting it back down. Keep him from all on top of me for, for support. All it's doing is catching that knee and just keeping it going. Depending on how well you do the technique, you may or may not get it. But your hand needs to make the effort to go there just in case. Okay? Let's do this one. The whole thing non-stop this way. I was late that time to see it. I picked my hands up first and followed with the body and look where I am. I'm having to support myself. For you teachers, if you're ever going to be teaching, you're going to teach this kata, teach from your mistakes. Don't try to cover your mistakes because your students will copy you. They think, oh, well, that's the way Fred does it. That's the way Richard does it, so it must be the right way. No. If when you screw up and you know you screwed up, tell them you screwed up. That way people won't copy your mistakes. I'll try to do it correct this time. Better. Did you see the mistake I made that time? Probably not from that angle. I made another mistake for you on camera. What I made, come back down. What I did was, as he was picking me up, I went to here and I went and collapsed my elbows. Once again, I'm now having to push again. And there I go on my face one more time. Common mistakes. Don't let the hands go first. Don't let the elbows collapse. Believe it or not, I'm not trying to do that intentionally. <laughs> what I am doing is catching myself and being honest with myself. As soon as I feel myself get up on my toes and go and rocking forward, where I'm having to do that, I know I screwed up. You've got to be honest with yourself before you can be honest with anybody else. Try to get right this time. Save your knees. There we go. Questions on that? All right. We're going to stop with that one tonight. Um, just try to walk through it just a hair, if you can. And uh, I know it's quarter to nine. It's a little bit late, but.
That was one through four as a review. And then we went on to number five. Um, let me talk about number five on this one here. I'm going to show it a little bit from a front angle so the camera can see what the hands are doing at this time. As Yuke is moving into me, he's going to get Hidaka Jime. He's trying to get this choke on me. I have the sense that his hand is coming around. And at that point, I just turn my hands up and bring them straight up to me and pull gently, actually briskly, down. I'm trying to break that grip right there before it happens. From here, I take my left hand, just rotate it. Try not to let your elbow come up. Rotate it from the palm of your hand without doing that. Boom. At the same time you're doing this, your right hand opens up. Come around, push straight out in front of you, and come up. He will stop at Tenkai right there. When it starts hurting, it will stop. Now you have to keep this Hanari grip as he backs up. Don't let your hand come down, or don't let the Hanari get lost. You keep that Hanari the whole time to here. At that point is when you bring him down. And if he can do a fish flop, that's great. If you can't, don't worry about it. Keep the Hanari, lean into it, and ready to strike. Okay. One more time from the camera's angle here. It comes in. Boom. I break posture. Boom. Rotate, rotate, push. He stops. Keep the Hanari and bring him down. At this point, do the rest of the wrist lock and strike. Common mistakes on this one are to do silly things like come to here, raise your elbow. That gives him an opportunity to grab something potentially and choke you out anyway. The other thing is to come to here and then try to stand up before he's gone over your head. Again, you either get choked out or just knocked over onto your face. Get to here, rotate, rotate. And you start your push. The next thing that people like to do is they'll stop pushing right here. And they'll come up and bend their arms right here. Again, you've lost the grip because now he can potentially turn into you or pull you over that away very easily. Because he's standing and you're not. Okay, those are the three common mistakes to watch out for. Here. Here, the attacks. Boom. Notice his posture, right foot forward a little bit. He's in a strong posture here. Break. Don't do that. I just did it. Break, rotate, push all the way up, and then come up. After he goes past your head, then you come up. I'm not up here. I'm not down here. Straight out in front of you. You don't have to have these fingers pointed. I like to do that because it keeps me from grabbing. It's just a Henry grip right there. Okay? Okay, I'm going to address a couple of common other little things that questions that arose. Part of the problem is taking him down. When you're bringing him down, you might not have a Duque that's as good as Randy and who can fish flop as good as Randy. They just can't take this nice little ball. Hopefully, you can do a fish flop from here. Uh, that's what y'all saw him doing the tape. I'm not going to ask him to repeat that motion of putting an arm down and throwing the body up in the air. But if you have an uke who can't do that, as you go to bring him down, he's going to be falling forward of you, and his arm is going to end up forward of 90, and then you're just going to lose all this wrist lock. It's going to, you're going to have to do other contortions with it. So you're going to have to know your uke. Is that when you get him to here, don't fix one. I have to kind of sort of know, been working with him for time, that, put this a little bit more forward that he can't do the fish flop. So I have to make sure I bring him back further than where he wants to be so that when I bring him down, he's going to end up more in my center line here and not in front of me way over here. I want his arm to be as close to my center here so that I'm hitting this canary in my center as possible. Um, 
The other issue is uh, the rotating of the hand. Get this way. On this motion here, on taking him down, don't let this hand come down and the big loop and then come back on the elbow. This hand is just an incentive for him to come down. All it's going to do is when it, both hands are controlling from here, if you want to control fingers, that's fine. If you have small hands and your uke has got huge hands, so you might want this extra little control for the fingers. That, that <coughs> particular there is no problem, as long as you're maintaining this pen area posture. When you start the takedown, this hand's going to come down to right about here. At this point, you let your right hand go from wherever it is and bring it to the elbow in a nice little turning motion here. Preferably not this way, but around, so that the web of your thumb and first finger is on that elbow. And then from here, both hands push to the floor. And that'll bring it down pretty quick. The hand on the elbow is an incentive to come down. If I don't put the hand on the elbow, and I just rely on a little bit of pain, he might have a high pain threshold and bring it down. And this is as far as he's going to get, potentially. We caught this demonstration of principles. Potentially, he can do all sorts of stuff, especially going slow. If I come here and I just place here, well, he can still straighten that arm and fight me. Even if I got the canary, he can twist out of it. It's all sorts of things can happen. I want to come to here, here, and then both hands push to the floor equally. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is demonstrate. <laughs> Five, six, seven, and eight, which is what I should have done. So that's the next technique, next series we're going to go into. That was, I'm sorry, that was five. We're going to do six, seven, eight now, since I just did five. And we'll do it the same way, both directions. Uh, and of course, if you're caught to don't do what I was doing, which is fidgeting with my gi. You shouldn't do that. Uh, number six, Shihonagi. There's a variation to that, which you can do as Kote Kujiki, which is the break fall. And again, that is just as acceptable as Shihonagi in the course of your kata. That would be depending on you and your uke. <coughs> your uke pretty much dictates what throw you want to do. If you're thinking shiho and he, and he wants to do kote, kajiki, it sort of gets screwed up a little bit. And we found that out the other night when we were thinking two different thoughts here. From here, he's coming in. He's going to go right hand, right foot and grab, not with a reverse grab, this way, not that kind of way. He's taking your hand this way. At that point, just as he grabs it, you're going to bring both hands to your center as much as possible. Your right hand, you're going to turn it this way and just hook your fingers. That way, just hook. You're not going to grab, just hook. 
from here, you take your left hand and rotate flat, fingers out, as you're pulling your right hand in. Creates a nice little wrist lock. From here, you just start a body rise. Don't push with your hands, push with your body first. And then your hands continue to go. If you have the lock, he will start dancing and turning at this point, so that by the time you turn, he's out of the way of your foot. Otherwise, you'll clip his foot like that. We'll show it from the other angle here. And from here, it's to bring down, as in Shihonagi, before. You have to be stretched out when you take it down. We'll show it from this angle. Boom. Boom. Oops, that was wrong. Don't do that. I started with the hands and not with the body. Boom. 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 Now, the reason he escaped from me is because my foot stopped. I had to stop moving, and he kept going for that one. That's why he got out of my throat here for that one. So just be aware, I didn't, wasn't doing it completely and to its fullest extent here that it could be done. The variation is Kote Kajiki. Can you take the fall? I'll just show it one time. Uh, your uke decides that he wants to go around you instead of going backwards. Boom, boom. All this is the same, but instead of turning his body completely backwards and going around this way, that, which would be Shiho, he decides he wants to go right here and turn into you, like with that left hand at one point. From here, you bring him over into the Kote Kujiki breakfall. I have seen it done slightly off to this angle before, too. We get to here, and Uke steps on you, you just come out with it. That's just as acceptable if Uke starts leaning on you. It's fine. Okay? Try that. Oh, okay. So they can see what's happening. Okay. The next one is a strike to the knee. This one looks so fake, it's ridiculous. Because I'm not actually striking... He's trying to pick me up, and a lot of people like to come up over here, they come all the way up, and then go, bam, and push on his knee. At that time, it's way too late. That's a common error. All I'm trying to do is, as he's picking me up, is to, just as he starts, I'm going to, like, bring my hand up and place it to his knee. At that point, he, by picking me up, causes a push. And I'm not having to whack on his knee to, to strike it, or to, or to beat it and dislocate it. Uh, the funny part about this is, is there's a, I don't know exactly how you want to call it, but the physics motions, but he's here, his weight is planted on this knee. For him to try to pick me up, he has to push with this knee to go to this leg over here to pick me up. All I'm doing is causing a lateral pressure to his downward push. And if you remember some of the lectures I was telling you about, when you have the lateral pressures, you quit pushing the, the same way and you start fighting the push. Well, he thinks he's pushing down. The more he pushes down, the more his structure just starts to collapse. It's one of those really weird things. You don't need to be whacking and pushing. Um, in my old days, my younger days, I should say, I used to be able to do this, and this was only a timing drill. As he picked me up, I would turn my hand over make a small circle and place it there in a whole length of a time. The time it took me to get here, I would be here. But I was doing this for timing in order to slow my hand down. So it would look like this. I'm not saying you have to do it. I just say this is the way I used to do it. To come here to go. Did you catch that? You want to zoom in on there or something? I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I'm telling you I did it. Hmm? One more. Okay. I'm just telling you, it's a timing drill to be able to do this. Did you get it? Okay. That's all I did. Was it kept me, that little motion kept me from doing this. Okay. <coughs> you don't have to fall. To go. Oh. It kept me from getting here, whacking on his knee. It slowed me down enough so that my hand was placed there. That's all that was for, was to slow me down. But now, what I figured out is as he goes to pick me up, I just place. I just start to bring my hand up. See, he's picking my hand up already. 
You see my whole shoulder start to rise, but he picks me up. As he picks it up, I just place my hand there and then let my body go the rest of the way. I'm not, if I end up out here like this, I push too hard with my hand. It needs to be somewhere close to your body. If you ended up out here, you're, you're pushing with your hand and you don't want that. Um, don't forget to curl the toes. This is one of the simplest ones yet hardest ones to do. Uh, other angle? Okay. This way? Or straight? Don't like that. Oh, Uke needs to attack down the line of Tori's knees all the time. If Tori's sitting here like this, he needs to come almost dead on. If Tori's sitting here like this, he needs to come over here. The line of attack is toward Uke's knee because that is a weak place to bring him out. It helps break him out to that perpendicular. He's trying to get him out side of his leg. So his attack is down this line of the knee. On the other one too, same way. Okay, questions on that? It's a real easy one to do. Eat more bananas. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, occasionally, what's the best way to show this? This angle? Okay. Sometimes, what ends up happening is Luke will step too deep on you when they go to grab. He casts the line of your knee with his front foot. He's way past the line of his knee. So by the time you come up, your hand's not going to be anywhere near his knee. So you have to make an adjustment, and it's really fun to do, because all you do is as he picks you up, you place your hand here, but don't go to his knee yet. You just place your hand out here, and then rotate with your left knee, and then drop to the right. It's just a simple little boom, and settle right back down again on it. So therefore, I'm pushing by dropping my center at that point, and not by being picked up. With him put doing the weight, I do the weight by dropping center on my knee. So one more time. He steps too deep. Boom, picks me up. Boom. Okay? Isn't that fun? Marty says, what? Okay. Then you have to have something to push with besides your hand. Yeah, maybe you were showing if they were a little bit too far out. I remember this being like this. Yeah, that's if they come too far away from me. But sometimes they come too deep. Okay, try that. It took Marty's explanation, but it took Raj's visual demonstration to, uh, for me to figure out what it was that you're actually talking about. The other thing that Uke likes to do occasionally, which is what you were doing, was Uke will come and they will try to grab too far away from Uke. This foot is too far away so that he'll bend over out here and if I come up, my hand is like way out over here. There's no way I can get it. That's because Uke is too far away from Tori to try to actually pick him up. And so what he's doing is he's bending his posture to do that. Now my hand can't physically reach out there. So what I do at this point is I let him pick me up. And then from here, I get my hand out. And then from here, I just widen my right foot. Okay. Could you see that okay from that tape, from that angle? Go this way? Yeah, I'm sorry, Marty. It took me a couple of times to figure out what it was that you were trying to say. This is based on a bad attack posture by Uke, who's too far away. He picks you up. Your hand can't come over here because you're breaking all the rules. So you just place it there and then take your right knee and open up with it. And drop on it. Did that clarify? What was going on over there for a second? Yeah, for posterity, so where should Uke's left foot be? Okay. Can you show that? The, the, the correct position where I want Uke's foot to be is just at that knee joint. Okay, center foot, not toe. Okay. Thank you. Well, ball of foot area. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but you know, you get from ditches on either side of that foot. It has to be into that knee joint. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
to show it once and then talk through it. <coughs> All right. What ends up having to happen on this one? Several things have to take place on this one to make it work. One of the first things that has to happen is you need to be able to come up and turn at the same time. So that you're not doing this motion of coming up and then opening up and turning. You're actually going to be coming up and turning. That's the hardest part with this technique to get used to. You Iaido folks might have a technique. I see she's running over there. Yeah. Iaido people might have a move that does that. So, so you need to come and turn at the same time. This one's killing your thighs. This is probably why my legs were killing me the other day for that motion. The next thing that has to happen is you need to be able to come up and rise real slow. At that moment, stop. Just as my is broken. My is broken right here. So at that point, I need to recognize my, and I need to be coming up, catching at that point. Now, what I'm trying to do with the arm here, let's do this way. As I'm caught, inside butterfly, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't catch that. Most of the time, you'll see me miss it completely. I come to the outside. It's not what I want to do, but it's what ends up happening. I'm trying to get his arm to curl in such an angle where it's not straight like this, but <coughs> it's bent sort of like that. What I'm trying to get. Can you all see that from the camera? I'm trying to get that turn, not a straight arm. So it comes to here. Boom. See how his body wants to lean, to torque, and all this other motion. At that point, I throw him out. Just as he's fixing the step of that motion, I toss him with both hands, not one or the other, but both hands, I toss him out like a spear. Don't bring down like this, because if you torque down at that point, you can you can do damage to the elbows, all sorts of funny things. But if you just want to hurt somebody, go ahead and do that. Just come right to here, throw this hand down to their knee, and push your left hand out, and you get that. Okay? <laughs> so I'm asking you, please, kindly, of flatly, don't do that. Come to here. My broken, raise, twist. Throw and stand up at the same time at that point. Need to go another direction with that this that, one? That was good. That was a good direction. Okay. Uh, common mistakes that you'll see. I say they're common mistakes because that's all the ones I made when I was learning this kind of thing. I did. Why is that? Yeah, I saw it. It chewed out so many times. One of them is letting you get too close before you start to come up. Then you have to do other funny things and bail out, and it's just, there's ways out of it, but I'm not going to show you how to do it. But don't get close. Just know that mine's broken right there. You need to come up and turn. Toss. Open wide so that he doesn't have to jump over your leg. Right. At this point, you'll throw, you'll stand. Left foot comes. Because momentum has carried you that way. Okay. One more time, then the left try. Boom. That was close. Wasn't the best, but close. Okay. Try that. That's the left. Starts the standing techniques. We've already been one through eight with the kneeling. We're now going to start the standing. What Randy and I are going to do is to demonstrate all eight so that you can see the normal progression of back and forth. And then we'll stop and then cover each technique individually after we've done all eight of these standing.
Okay. First one off of the series. I think we need to. Now, for the sake of this demonstration of the tape, we're going to be changing angles and postures. So, when uh, reviewing the tape and actually trying to learn this kata, do it from the directions that we just showed you versus all the screwy directions that we're going to be doing it just for the sake of camera angles. The first technique, Uke is going to walk up to you and grab your right front lapel, collar, shoulder up in this area here. Your first motion, yeah, we're doing this for the camera. Sir. Your first motion is to be square to him. Take your lapel. Now, a lot of people are having a hard time getting their lapel up and around, but what you're trying to do is to lock his hand somehow or another to your body with that lapel. Majority of the time it doesn't work, but I hate to say this, but I just don't have a loose enough gi and I can't get it to lock, but I can get it at least with my hand somehow get that to lock. And at the same time I'm doing that, I'm retreating backwards with my left foot and giving an uppercut to the chin with the right hand. And I'm not actually trying to hit him, but if his face happens to get there, that's fine too. All I'm trying to do is to get his head to retreat. That motion has to happen at the same time. It cannot be here, here. Nor can it be here, here. Or these motions. I'm straight up with it. So that I end up in the same hand, same foot posture. From here, let your hand open, come across, and take his wrist. Can you see that from this angle? I need to just take my hand, come across, and take his wrist with his hand. Then what I do is I retreat down this line here, 180. And as I'm doing that, it'll cause his wrist to rotate over to get in this lock. Once I'm here, raise my left hand, put it to his elbow here, pull in gently, and then rest the weight of your arm on his elbow. It causes his knees to collapse. At that point, relax your weight, and he wants to stand up. As he stands up, you push into him with your upper body, and you throw. <coughs> so the whole motion. Boom. Retreat. In. Down. Up. coming in. You'll see it done numerous different ways. Let's get this way. All I'm trying to do really is to control this hand when I make my next step. You can lock it in this way. Randy and I have a tendency to use this little joint off the thumb off the knuckle to put it into the back of that hand. This opening of the gi here just gets his grip from being a strong grip to rotating out just a bit. <coughs> You get that motion, the hands will rotate just a little bit, and as it rotates, it puts himself, in, himself into a painful move with that thumb just sitting there. It just hurts a little bit. But if you're really trying to change this angle, this dynamic, this strong grip that he's got to a weaker posture, and it's just opening out. And in the course of that happening, you can lock it to you. The other thing is, is the dynamics of the, of the throw when he's on a body drop, remember the rules. If you're on a body body drop, you can be thrown forward. If you're on a body rise, you're throwing backwards. That rule is 99% the same all the time. I think there's a couple of exceptions to that rule. But most of the time, if he's on a body rise, you take him backwards. And like, like it was just brought up, fortunately, unfortunately, not by me, but I'm going to tell it to you for the tape. Fred told me this. This move out of the walk, when you come to here, this motion, not this first half, but this second half of the motion of that move of the walk, you'll find it right here. Good observation, sir. Wish I had thought of that. Actually, I think he told me that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, again, avoid the common error of the strike. It's not down here. It's not up here. You're not trying to punch him. 
like Yoshiba called his strikes loving strikes. They're designed to create an off balance. I think there's a couple of people I walked up to and I just smacked you one minute. You got, you got real strong. I just reached up and slapped you for a minute. You went, what? And during the course of that going, what? I was able to move. This strike does the same thing. It's just designed to get his head out of the way, to break the posture, get him popped up in the air a little bit, those kind of motions. Here, rotate, in, down. If you go too far with this, you press too hard, you're going to push him straight to the floor and he won't be able to stand up. That's why I made the comment earlier, when you're doing this, all it requires, once you get to here, this mawashi grip right here, all it requires is the weight of your arm. And it doesn't, I mean, just the gravity, the weight of your arm is all it takes. It doesn't take much of a body drop. Now, for a smaller person, smaller frame, smaller size person, doing it to somebody Randy size, you might want to bend your knees just a hair when you're doing that to get the rest of your mass behind it. But just know, be aware that you got a Hanari grip right here. Be careful with this. And you're causing the knees to bend. And then you just relax that grip. And then you push into him. You can turn a little bit like the motion of the walk, or you can hit this with your center either way, depending on your body size and shape. Next one. Basically, it's a seventh release motion. Here, get my hand follow with the center. Step under. Now, the, the, the sneaky part of this motion has to happen with my open hand here. Let's back up a little bit. Zoom. You'll find this happening in some other contests too. But what has to happen is, with an open hand, as I turn my center back into him, I rotate with an open hand, open hand, open hand, open hand across the back of his hand and his palm will slide right into the webbing of my thumb and first finger. At that point, you step. Now, this requires Uke to be cooperative a little bit and hesitating for you on that step. Otherwise, you have to do some a slightly different dance, which is it, okay. I'll show you the other dance for this. Just keep moving. Just to come here, just to go. To run up with him a little bit, which is legitimate. That's fine. It more, mainly happens in another content. But, uh, just teach you something different. So here, here. Notice I'm not coming all the way around like the release motion. I'm coming to here. Now I bring the hand down and I retreat with that foot and then step forward one more time. I think what I've shown a couple of times to people is you can take your right foot at this position right here. Don't worry about my bad posture right now. I can take my right foot and retreat it over here. Instead of stepping around, just retreat on it here. And then when you pivot around, you'll now be in your same hand, same foot posture when you do that. Instead of being in an opposite foot and then having to recover on it. If you watch, watch me do it several times, I'll do it one way one, one time and then the other way the next. So. But that allows you to end up in that posture. Things to avoid coming to here and trying, trying purposefully up here to get your hand around without moving your body, forcing it around. Uh, you end up fighting the grip, you end up moving, you end up breaking that motion and, and he ends up running away, you end up being in a bad posture. All these things when you try to get in a hurry. Instead, take your time with it. Boom, boom. Wow, did you see that magic? <laughs> if you ever do that for your test, for your black belt test, do that. Okay? Don't stop and go, we have to do it again because I screwed up the technique. No, do exactly what you just saw right there. The judges will understand. If they're any kind of high-ranking person at all, they've all done that at one time or another. So, not to worry. They understand what that's all about. Let's try this again. Here, here, here. The key to this thing is to keep this hand open the whole time. With this letter L, 
in your thumb right here. Not like this, not with the bent karate thumb, but with open thumb, open hand. Let's go this way. Real slow. Here, let's back up. Here. Here. Watch the hand. Here. There. And push. Okay. Thanks, sir. Try that. Okay. Two things on this last one. When you're doing this release motion, as you're ducking under, get your hand to move. Just put your hand to a pushing posture. When you come to here, now leave your hand in this bent posture like this. My hand is like flexed out. It's not straight. If you leave it there just like this and you bring it over your head, as you bring it down, it's going to be right where you need it to be. Could you see that on tape okay? Do I need to go slower or move or something? Do I need to One back more up? time. One more time. So, this angle, was that a good angle? Really slow. Boom. Get that flick. From here, push, step, keep that bent hand. Don't do this with it. You'll lose your contact. Keep your bent hand. As you bring it around, it'll flop right into place right here. If you don't do that, you'll end up having this problem occurring. You come here, and then your hand comes straight as you're coming around. It's not bent backwards. Now it becomes straight at this point. As you bring it around like this, you're going to lose that. You see his hand slip right off? So keep it flexed out as you do that, and you'll find that when his hand, his grip releases, right here, it's going to release at this point, somewhere right in here, his hand is on contact. I have it with the back of my hand. If I do that, it slips off. So keep it here so as it slides up, it's ready to go. Maybe what was happening. Uh, 